Uh, she's going to talk to us uh, about the role of the right ventricular function and coronary flow reserve in left bundle branch block and cardiac resynchronization therapy. Thank you. It's thank you. Yours. First of all, I have to uh, thank you, uh, organizers, for uh, uh, calling us for this symposium. And especially my thanks go to George Athanasopoulos and his beautiful and kind wife, Nancy, who make uh, this uh, possible because uh, restrictions are terrible. We, we barely <laughs> got here. So, because I hope this uh, situation with the COVID will soon end and uh, that we embrace our lives as it were uh, uh, in, the, in the last time. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. With Serbia, it's always complicated. <laughs> So thank you for all. And I will now speak about role, as you said, and this uh, 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 network between the right ventricle, coronary flow reserve, left bundle branch block, and uh, resynchronization therapy. So definition of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, that is a uh, point here, we all know that this uh, disease uh, that has a uh, very uh, bad prognosis uh, in uh, idiopathic uh, form. It has normal epicardial artery, but a lot of ischemic, uh, uh, chronic ischemic disease leads to uh, dilated ischemic cardiomyopathy. So this is a very, uh, uh, very bad, bad disease with a bad progression. So this is a complex interplay between left bundle branch block, right ventricle, coronary flow reserve and perfusion, CRT and prognosis. And I will go through these parts. So uh, feature left bundle, left bundle branch block is common feature in dilated cardiomyopathy. And we all know that it leads to abnormal left ventricle activation and because of that, delayed ventricular relaxation and increased diastolic extravascular resistance. And this is the part when uh, coronary flow happens uh, actually in diastole. So uh, this feature of normal relaxation and higher resistance uh, produce a lower and slower diastolic flow and hence uh, reduce coronary flow reserve. And that's why uh, this is the pathophysiologic substrate that leads to uh, septal perfusion uh, defects during imaging and during the stress. But we all know that the uh, main indication for CRT uh, therapy resynchronization is just existence of the wild uh, QRS complex in the form of left bundle branch block and that this patient had uh, best prognosis uh, and um, uh, benefit of the CRT and then uh, male uh, and ischemic uh, cardiomyopathy less than dilated cardiomyopathy. So here you see the, the recommendation and guidelines that left bundle branch block with a uh, wide uh, QRS around uh, 150 mi uh, millisecond is the uh, first uh, class and level of evidence uh, for A for CRT therapy. And uh, what about right ventricle and how left bundle block influence it? Uh, during the normal contraction of the left ventricle, we know that uh, contraction of the septum actually facilitates uh, the ejection of the right ventricle. So. Uh, it uh, goes to 40% that adds to the rise of the uh, 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 systolic pressure in the right ventricle. But what is happening when we have this abnormal mechanic uh, activation? So here at the upper part, you see the uh, strain rates at the upper part of the septal septum and uh, uh, the uh, lower part of the free uh, wall of the right ventricle. So 
here is abnormality because we have the presystolic uh, presystolic contraction, presystolic motion in red uh, before aortic valve opening, and after that a little plateau where septum is uh, actually don't have uh, meaningful contraction. So right uh, the wall. Uh, free wall of uh, right ventricle is contracting, but against the lower pressure. So the ejection phase and rise of the uh, pressure in uh, right ventricle is ro uh, slower and lower, of course. And then we have a vigorous contraction of the left ventricle and then uh, actually against the, the uh, end of the con contraction of the right ventricle. But CRT uh, restore all of that. And actually, it is uh, attenuates abnormal septal motion and improves uh, right ventricle pressure rise. And this seems very good, uh, but there is a problem if the uh, failure of uh, right ventricle exists. And this has been shown in this uh, work of Danny and authors in care heart failure study. When they measure uh, the, the function of the right ventricle by, by the motion, annular motion on the tricuspid annulus, and uh, they have shown that uh, if the right ventricle had a tapse that is uh, lower than 14 millimeters, then the survival of this patient would be worse. And uh, uh, regardless, the therapy that is used. So again, with a CRT or without CRT, this patient had uh, worse prognosis. Uh, so we know that uh, uh, right ventricle has a very good prognostic uh, value, but uh, the function of right ventricle is very important for survival and so for prediction. So in many clinical situations, if the right ventricle is failed, you cannot expect the recovery of the patient or it is very uh, suspicious. But uh, especially in the CRT therapy that is uh, uh, actually restoring normal contraction of the left ventricle, you, we all have to bear in mind that the right ventricle is maybe uh, failed and then that the contraction will, again, normal contraction will put extra uh, overload and overwork to the free wall that is actually disease. So uh, this is uh, actually the, the, the one field that should be uh, explored. And what is the uh, role of coronary perfusion in this uh, patient, in this interplay? Uh, this is the, the network of the microcirculation and it should be preserved if we expect any uh, wellness of our patient. Uh, but in uh, dilated cardiomyopathy as well as um, ischemic cardiomyopathy, there is rarefaction of microcirculation of the capillary bed and the density. So uh, this density is lower. And uh, also these, uh, these are the huge uh, ventricles uh, and there we have a higher left ventricle mass and a high wall stress and also increased extravascular compressive force due to elevated left hand, uh, ventricle and diastolic pressure. And uh, hence of that, we have impaired endothelium dependent and independent vasodilatation. And this actually uh, caused uh, to the steady state of hyperperfusion and constant ischemia, uh, even with the very, very light work. So this all goes to, to left ventricle remodeling and uh, further cycles which uses with uh, ischemia and scarring. And here you can see that uh, this positive correlation with this uh, my, uh, microvascular capillary density and coronary flow reserve. And uh, actually this has been shown in the work of Galati 
uh, they measured myocardial perfusion and uh, reserve in dilated patients and control. So here you can see at the left hand side that the uh, perfusion flow, uh, perfusion is higher at the rest in the patient with dilated cardiomyopathy, but during the stress they cannot increase their perfusion, so they are at the lower level comparing to controls. So here the uh, perfusion reserve, you see how is it small comparing to uh, the controls on the left hand side. And also it was, <clears throat> they shown that uh, they divided the dilated cardiomyopathy patients in group with the um, left ventricle ejection fraction more than 35% and less. And here also <clears throat> they have uh, not in the uh, resting function, flow was equal between these uh, ventricles, but during the stress, you see that the patients with the lower ejection fraction, <clears throat> around uh, less than 35%, had lower stress uh, flow <coughs> and increase and lower perfusion. And these are the patients that uh, are suitable and we choose among them uh, for the CRT therapy. And here is again myocardial ischemia hypothesis Then the low myocardial flow is correlated to the low ejection fraction. And we have also seen that and uh, proved that in our little study uh, <clears throat> reporting in 240, uh, when we measure uh, coronary flow reserve in the patient uh, who were candidates to CRT therapy, and uh, we found that the patient uh, who has a good coronary flow reserve, uh, more than two, uh, they had actually a better response to CRT therapy and was, were responder. So we found that uh, univariate predictors of response to CRT were and diastolic diameter and systolic diameter and, of course, uh, the value of coronary flow reserve. Uh, this, our finding is in line with the findings of uh, Van der Heyden, uh, who demonstrated that coronary flow reserve is negatively related to uh, left ventricle and diastolic pressure high or high uh, pulmonic wedge pressure or also the pressure in the right atrium. And also coronary flow reserve is negatively uh, connected with the NIHA class. So worse the NIHA class, worse is, uh, also is the coronary flow reserve is reduced. And these are uh, now our results again at this uh, patient that we uh, look uh, on uh, earlier. So we uh, try to uh, reach them and made the long-term follow-up uh, around 49 months. And here you can see the, the results of previous study. We have non-responders and black. Uh, they have low coronary flow reserve before CRT, and six months after CRT, they have also uh, lower uh, uh, coronary flow reserve comparing to responders. And now they have also worse prognosis, very, very uh, bad. So something is in the coronary flow reserve. And we got these uh, predictors. Uh, we calculate that was end diastolic volume, and rest and systolic volume at rest that is something that is known and the uh, coronary flow reserve at uh, adenosine maximum hyperemia. So to conclude, uh, response and survival uh, after CRT depends of interplay of many, many factors. Some are known, but some are neglected. So uh, I think uh, that uh, functional status of uh, right ventricle should deserve more to look for when we are planning our patient for the CRT therapy. And uh, we have to, to calculate the impact of left bundle branch block on perfusion and right ventricle. And microvascular state is 
common pathway that leads to disease progression. So, so severely depressed coronary flow reserve is a predict of, of poor prognosis. But the longitudinal studies and additional research is needed in this field. Thank you. And <laughs> greetings from Serbia. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for the nice and concise presentation. I have a question for you. Uh, is there a level of right ventricular dysfunction uh, that would exclude the patient from implantation of, uh, of uh, biventricular patient? Mm -hmm. Uh, not for now, because uh, there is not uh, uh, random research and uh, studies that, that will uh, put the cutoff. This study was care heart, heart failure was around, uh, this TAPSE was uh, 14 millimeters, and that was some kind of cutoff. But uh, I think we, we all should uh, take care and uh, see what's happening, because obviously right ventricle free wall cannot, if uh, right ventricle is failing, cannot support all this uh, strength again with the CRT. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions, Dr. Athanasopoulos? Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you very much for your excellent introduction to this uh, very elegant and clinically relevant topic. As far as it concerns the CARE HF data uh, for the right ventricular contribution, uh, Philip, uh, you are aware that the, in the CRH study, they studied also the interventricular delay in, in conjunction to the uh, conventional delay. So they did not found they did not find any relevance of the interventricular, uh, but they did not measure, and there are no data because the care was the key, the backbone of the story they did not measure the RV function, there are no data. I had a personal communication with John Cleland some, uh, some time ago, and uh, he could not provide me of any information about the uh, RV function. The group of uh, Leiden uh, has shown uh, that, um, uh, and also I think uh, Ivan Stankovic uh, was working yes, there. Yes, uh, yes. They have shown yes. that the right ventricular function is an independent predictor of the outcome of the CRT. Uh, and uh, I think that in clinical practice, uh, it is difficult to see a patient with a proper outcome post CRT if the RV is dilated with tricuspid regurgitation. This is my personal anecdotal experience. Yes. And I believe also because we have presented uh, in the American Heart Association a long time ago, 2005, 2006, a relevant data in a small group of patients with dilated cardiomyopathy pre and post CRT. And uh, I've, I've, no, I've no data for the outcome, but it was impressive how the flow reserve uh, was improved in, in, a, in, in a few uh, patients. So I think that there is a, a clinical role uh, once you have the ability to measure flow reserve in this scenario of DCM to see which is the microvascular damage actually. Well, that's the yeah. message of the CFR in this specific uh, co cohort. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have no comment for okay. this. I agree totally. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,